some trees truly stand out. Be it the spindly ones that exist in the imagination of Tim Burton, the wise ones that guide Link in The Legend of Zelda, or the immense mythical behemoth of Norse mythology that is Yggdrasil. But what if we were to tell you that there are real trees that give these fictional ones a run for their bark? These are the most unusual trees in the world. Number 15. The Dragon Blood Tree. The Dragon Blood Tree, also known as the Dracaena Cinnabari and the Socotra Dragon Tree, is not your average tree. If it was, then, well, you wouldn't be learning about it, would you? Oddly enough, it's not only its appearance that's a bit odd, but everything else about it, too. The Dragon Blood Tree is native to a part of Yemen called Socotra in the Arabian Sea. It looks like an upside-down crown with a densely packed top. Just imagine an umbrella and you'll be describing the dragon blood tree. It has leaves at the end of its youngest branches only, and these are shed every three to four years. It also grows small, fleshy berries that are eaten by birds. It's what the berries secrete that cause the tree to get the name of dragon blood tree. They release a deep red resin that looks like blood and is a bit abnormal compared to the berries on other trees. Even though habitat loss highlights an uncertain future for this tree, it still has many uses. The gum resin from the roots is used in toothpaste and as a stimulant, and the leaves are a carminative. The trees are also harvested for the dragon's blood resin, which is used in dye. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or Slenderman will come from under your bed while you're sleeping. <laughs> Number 14. Shipworm Tree. Okay, so this isn't a tree, but once you learn more about shipworms, you'll realize why we believe they're worthy of a mention. They do relate to trees, and they are unusual. Shipworms, also known as Teredo navales, are mollusks that live in saltwater and dine on wood. They are a type of creature with an identity crisis, for they look like a worm, but taste like a clam. Apart from a small, hard portion on their head, which they use for drilling into wood, they are soft and squishy. In the Trot province of Thailand and throughout Southeast Asia, these squirmy little critters are prized food. People will go out into the water looking for submerged pieces of wood or trees that may contain shipworms. A good sign that they're there is a small hole in the wood. You can then gently slice the wood with an axe to reveal the shipworms tucked inside. Well, then what do you do with them? Well, you eat them. You can eat them raw, but you run the risk of waterborne diseases. Most people cook them in a dish called Gaeng Liang Priang, which is a type of curry. The worms are cut into small pieces, then cooked with a range of other ingredients like banana flour, shrimp paste, and Thai chili. Number 13. Juniper Tree the juniper tree doesn't look all that unusual. In fact, it's made up of around 70 species throughout North America, so it's more common than unusual. Juniper varieties can all be classified as alternating leaf pattern species. It has needle-like leaves, but some species have scale-like leaves that possess oil glands. Alongside the leaves, the juniper tree has small brown or blue berry-like cones that appear waxy and gray. It takes around three seasons of growth for these to mature, and have between 1 to 12 seeds in a cluster. So th that's all standard stuff, but there's something unique about this tree, and it's the usefulness of it. The world has hundreds of thousands of tree species, and many of them are of no particular use to us except for timber. The juniper tree, however, is well utilized in many ways. The berry-like cones are used for food flavoring and alcohol like gin. The oil from the tree is also used in diuretics and perfumes. Then there's the wood. You won't find all too many pencils, fence posts, or cabinets that don't have fragrant juniper wood used in their making. This tree might not be rare or unusual in its looks, but it is when you consider how many uses it has. Number 12. 
The Cashew Tree The Cashew Tree is an evergreen tree that is full of surprises. It is most commonly found in Central America, Northern South America, Brazil, and the Caribbean Islands. It grows up to around 46 feet high, while the more profitable dwarf cashew trees stop growing at about 20 feet. And here I can show you the cashew tree fruits. There's far more to this tree than meets the eye, even if it's clear by looking at the cashew fruit on it that it's gonna have some weird and wonderful features. The cashew seed and cashew apple are both grown on the tree. The cashew seed is, in fact, the cashew nut we all know and love. It's proven popular in cashew butter, cashew cheese, and all manner of other delicious snacks and treats. Believe it or not, even the shell of the seed is useful. It has unique derivatives that can be made into waterproofing products, paints, lubricants, and even arms production dating back to World War II. The cashew apple, on the other hand, is what the nut attaches to. It can be eaten fresh, fermented, made into alcohol, or cooked in a hurry. People even use it to make jam, chutney, and preserves. Number 11. The Dinosaur Tree Okay, as you probably guessed, the Dinosaur Tree is not its scientific name, but you'll quickly see why it's called that. It's actually the Walemi Pine Tree, and it's the rarest and oldest species. This is a Walemi Pine. They are one of the world's rarest plants. It dates back to around 200 million years ago and was learned about from fossil records rather than the real thing. In fact, up until 1994, it was presumed extinct. That was until a bushwalker at Walemi National Park, just outside of Sydney, Australia, stumbled across it. It was called the Botanical Find of the Century, and the tree has become the focus of several studies. Thanks to its comeback, there will be a time when you can grow a Walemi pine tree in your own backyard. And you'll likely want to, for they're quite spectacular. They grow up to around 130 feet high and have beautiful light green and dark green foliage with two types of leaves. The best way to bring this tree back from the brink of extinction is by growing as many of them in pots, gardens, and parks as possible. Any purchases of this tree then go toward conservation research and protecting its future. Number 10. Tree of Chuli El Arbol de Chuli, or the Tree of Chuli, is a truly special tree. Well, its species of Montezuma cypress isn't all that special, but this one in particular is. This special tree is located in the town center of Santa Maria del Chuli in Oaxaca, the Mexican state. It's fenced off in church grounds and is visited by tens of thousands of people. So what makes this tree so special? Well, for starters, it has the stoutest tree trunk in the world. The trunk measures 137.8 feet in circumference with a diameter of 46.1 feet. That's not exactly small. Because of the tree's crown, getting an accurate idea of height is not easy. However, it's thought to be around 116 feet tall. Even when you consider how large its trunk is and how tall this tree is, those points still aren't the only reasons why the Tree of Chuli is so special. It's thought to be between 1,200 and 3,000 years old, with the date of seeding based at around 400 to 600 AD. That's old. Legend has it that it was planted by the priest of the god of the Aztecs, known as Ehecatl, the Aztec Wind God. Given that it's on church property, that idea does seem to carry some weight. Number 9. General Sherman Tree you won't find yourself in too many situations where you make a trip just to see a tree. But this could be one such situation, for the General Sherman tree is most certainly worth viewing in person. This tree in California is the world's largest tree. It is 275 feet tall, 36 feet wide at the base, and 17.5 feet in diameter. Imagine trying to cut that down for firewood with a regular chainsaw. This tree is truly something special. It's accessible by two trails to the north end of the giant forest, 
and there are even park shuttles to get there. As the roots of this tree are very shallow, there is a fence to protect them, and visitors must stick to the paved pathways to get a closer look. If you think the General Sherman tree looks large far away, then getting up close and personal will blow you away. The largest branch is 6.8 feet long, and the circumference from the ground is 102.6 feet. Getting your photo with this tree is quite a memorable experience. But its dimensions aren't even the most amazing part. The tree is still growing. Every year, it adds enough wood to make a 60-foot tree. Even at 2,200 years old, it continues to thrive. Number 8. Silk Cotton Tree the silk cotton tree, or kapok tree, is a huge tree that's native to Africa, the New World, and is now in parts of Asia. It grows up to around 164 feet and will grow as much as 13 feet in a single year. This monster of a tree is no small fry, that's for sure. While its size inches long and is moisture resistant, they dry quickly, are resilient, and are buoyant. As a result, they have been commonly used in water safety equipment like life preservers and even as stuffing for pillows, upholstery, and insulation. In saying that, the fibers are flammable, which means synthetic fibers and foam rubber are slowly becoming the preferred option. Number 7. Sabina Tree you won't find all too many trees as strong or as noble as the Sabina tree. Even as they battle the elements at high altitudes, the Sabina tree continues to thrive. What's particularly fascinating about this tree, which grows up to around 26 feet tall, is how it prefers challenging weather conditions to anything remotely normal. From salt air to wind, rain, and the pressures of coastal conditions, nothing's a problem. Instead of dying, the tree just forms its trunk shape depending on the way the elements have pushed it. It's not uncommon to see them bent almost in two, almost like a stooped older man. The bark of the Sabina tree varies from a gray-brown shade to red-brown. The fruits contain up to 10 seeds, and these are spread by raven, one of the very few bird species which prefer to eat them. This tree has also been around since ancient times and is abundant in Ibiza. Its rough outward appearance and its inner strength are thought to be a metaphor for the people of Ibiza. That's why it's considered a strong and noble tree. Number 6. Baobab Tree when you think of a succulent, you picture a small potted plant in an apartment building for the neglectful plant parent. Believe it or not, a 200 million year old tree that grows to around 100 feet tall is also a succulent, and it's called the Baobab Tree. This beautiful tree is the symbol of the African continent. It predates the splitting of the continents over 200 million years ago and humanity. Therefore, it's no spring chicken. This beautiful tree thrives in the African savanna even when nothing else does. Consequently, it has become a symbol of positivity. Given that it's a succulent, it will absorb as much water as it can in its trunk during the rainy season, then use it to produce fruit in the dry season. As a result, it's called the Tree of Life. They can live for around 5,000 years and have a circumference of about 165 feet. Because of its size, it is loved for its ability to provide shelter, food, and water for both animals and humans. That is quite often why, when you see a baobab tree, you see signs of communities and life nearby. Number 5. Tree of Life We may never understand the meaning of life. And that's okay. It's a pretty big undertaking to ever try and understand it. But do you know what's equally as hard to understand? How a single tree manages to survive in an unforgiving environment with no water source in sight. Aptly dubbed the Tree of Life, or Sharajat Al Hayat, the 32-foot mesquite tree in Bahrain is mind-boggling. 
It stands on its own in a harsh climate and has managed to survive in a remote desert for around 400 years. Of course, most people know that this tree, and many like it, can store water in their root system. But in order to store water, you need to be able to find it, and the desert just doesn't have any. Because of how strange the tree is, there are many legends surrounding it. Some believe that it's the site of the biblical Garden of Eden, and that's how the tree has managed to survive. Others believe it has been around since pre-Islamic times, and that the ancient Sumerian god Enki protects it. We're still no closer to finding the answer. Number 4. Basket Tree The basket tree is a somewhat ominous name for a tree. You may not even guess how it got such a name, for it's definitely no species we've ever heard of. And that's because it's not. Instead, the basket tree is just one of an entire collection of uniquely shaped trees. Others in the collection include the two-leg tree, needle and thread tree, and the cube tree. The trees were shaped in unique shapes by Axel Erlinson, a Swedish-American farmer who lived from 1884 until 1964. He opened a horticultural attraction with his trees in the 1940s and advertised it with See the world's strangest trees here. He subsequently called it the Tree Circus. His unique trees appeared in the column of Ripley's Believe It or Not no fewer than 12 times. Before his death, he sold them and they were moved to Gilroy Gardens in the mid-1980s. So how does one create a basket tree? It's not easy. Axel planted six sycamore trees in a circle, topped them once they were one foot tall, then grafted them together to form the shape of a diamond. He sold the property in 1963 with the trees for $12,000. Number 3. Cannonball Tree if you want to be wowed by a tree, then let it be the cannonball tree. This shrub can't help but put a smile on your face. It comes from the Lecithidaceae family and is a tall, soft-wooded variety. It's also native to northeastern South America and is cultivated in North America's southern regions. You might be wondering how it gets its name, but it's pretty self-explanatory. The round, woody fruits on this tree look precisely like rusty cannonballs. Fortunately, they're not as dangerous as them. The fruit grows to around 8 inches in diameter and has a hard shell. So if you were gonna throw this fruit, it would hurt, but it wouldn't explode like its very real counterpart. Often, these pulpy fruits, which have many seeds, are used by locals to make utensils. After all, we are becoming more environmentally friendly and trying to cut down on our plastic usage. The leaves are somewhat special too, as they are smooth with showy flowers and grow straight from the trunk. The flowers can even grow as long as three feet long. Number 2. Wisteria Okay, you caught us. The wisteria plant in Japan is not a tree. Technically, it's a vine, but it's well worth learning more about. This particular plant is the largest in Japan and is located in the Ashikaga Flower Park. While it's not the largest in the world, that doesn't mean it's small by any means. This vine is half an acre and is thought to date back to around 1870. You'll find the most enormous wisteria in Sierra Madre, California, which is about 4,000 square meters. Its fairy tale like appearance makes it a worthwhile attraction to visit, particularly when it's producing its beautiful pink and purple flowers. You might be wondering how this half acre vine is holding up given that vines need to climb something. Vines can become quite heavy, especially this one so it's all held up on steel supports. These supports allow visitors to walk under the wisteria and admire it from below. So while the wisteria in Japan at Ashikaga Flower Park is not a tree, we're pretty sure we're forgiven. After all, it's hard to find something as beautiful as wisteria in full bloom. Number 1. Windswept Tree most trees and plants take the elements in their stride. After all, some trees manage to grow in the desert with no water sources. But these trees take the term adapting to a whole new level. 
It doesn't take an expert to know precisely how these trees got their windswept appearance. The wind, of course. They are located at Slope Point in the South Island of New Zealand, in a place known as the Southernmost Point. Much of this area is unpopulated, with a lot of land used for sheep farming. The wind might have something to do with it. Strong winds make their way 2,000 miles away from Antarctica and burst through the trees. It's clearly quite a common issue, for the trees have a permanent slant along the rocky coastlines of this region. However, don't let the wind put you off from visiting this isolated part of the world. These magnificent trees are a stone's throw away from beautiful walking tracks and bodies of water around the Catlins. There are also plenty of areas to go walking on the beach and a quaint little campgrounds to call home for a few days. As you can see, nature is pretty beautiful. There's more to the average tree, bush, and shrub than meets the eye. Have you ever seen any of these trees in person? Did they live up to the expectations? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!